With the beautiful Puget Sound just to our west, you get a look inside CenturyLink Field here in Seattle. These folks love their football in Seattle. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad came out of the tunnel, and it was just absolutely deafening in this building. They're set for football. So are we as the Seahawks get set to match up with Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is Peyton Barber. He led them in rushing a season ago. Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. From the shotgun, it's Winston. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. Give him six on the play, and they're going to face a third down. I like it, I like it, I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. It really gets them amped up as they go forward. He's got Evans. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It's a gain of 16, first down Tampa Bay. And that's the first connection, the number one overall pick in 2015, finding the number seven pick in 2014 in Evans. And what a great target Mike Evans is for Jameis Winston. Winston's a pretty accurate thrower, but that catch radius that Evans provides, that makes him that much more dangerous. A bit of an opening there on the first down run as they get this forward for about six yards. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. The last run got six, now second and four. Off the play fake, Winston. Incomplete. Maybe a little over-anxious in the pocket there. He just didn't look comfortable on that throw. No, he didn't because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery. And I think you might have had it right. Wasn't really confident with what he saw downfield and almost felt like he wanted to pull that one back. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. From the gun, Winston. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Scott Miller, 42 yards. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. Extra point by Gay is up and good, and that makes the score 7-0. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. The Seahawks coming back out here on offense. And, you know, with that 6-2 and two record, what people may not realize is they're 4-0 on the road this year. Hold on a second. They've lost their two games at home. I know you think that about atmosphere. them being so strong at home, but 4-0 on the road after the win in Atlanta. And not only that, they've scored 27 or more points in all four of those road games. I feel like it's almost a quiet 6-2 and two with the attention being paid to the Niners, the Saints, the Packers, you know, in the NFC. It is a quiet 6-2. And, and part of that, the Saints went to 
to Seattle and beat them. So that's one reason. The other, as you noted, the other teams with those quarterbacks and the quarterback, you know, situation in New Orleans with Bridgewater stepping in for Breeze. And just the Niners are such an incredible story considering where they've been in recent years. You're right, it's a quiet six and two. But I think Seattle enjoys that because the second half of their schedule really toughens up and a lot of attention will be paid to them then. Yeah, week 10, they will be at San Fran. That's going to be a huge game, but first home for Tampa Bay. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. To throw is Wilson. They'll roll him out right. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Now, how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. On second down now, it's Carson. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. From the gun on third down, Wilson completes it to Dixon. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 46. Here's Wilson. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And he's got this down to the 35. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. On the delay, here's Carson. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And they'll be facing a third and 12. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them. They're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. And he better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. Tampa Bay trots onto the field again here offensively. That week 8 game, Charles, that you and I were discussing earlier, lost to Tennessee, and you felt like that was a game that they needed because now they're 2-5, and five, and there just feels to be a huge difference between 3-4 and four and 2-5, and five, and now they're not only at 2-5, and five, they're on a three-game losing streak as well. 3-4, and four, you feel like you can still compete for your division, right? You feel like you can still make a run towards the playoffs. 2-5, and five, sometimes that makes people say, you know something, trade deadline coming up, make some moves, plan for the future. We'll see how Tampa Bay decides to play it. But a big game from Mike Evans, 11 catches, 198 yards, two touchdowns. That quick whistle, though, on the fake field goal by Tennessee, when Tampa picked it up and scored, that may very well cost them the ball game because they played well enough to win it. By the way, at 2-5, the record.
record isn't easy, or I'm sorry, not the record, the schedule coming up isn't easy. They're gonna go to Seattle, home to the Cardinals, okay, but then home to the Saints, so two of the next three really tough. Winston now to throw on first down. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Ten yards there and a Buccaneer first down. Chris Godwin, the former Penn Stater, should see an increase in action and production in 2019 with Adam Humphreys and Deshaun Jackson gone from the team. 842 yards in 2018, second only to Mike Evans on the Buccaneers. Now it's Barber. Michael Kendricks, the linebacker, there to get him down. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. From the 35 on second down, Winston. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Working out of the gun, Winston. He's going to let this one go deep. And that's caught inside the 35. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. 33 yards that time. How about this first quarter for them throwing the football? This defense has zero answers for what they've seen so far with the ball in the air. I'm not sure how they're going to change things around, but offensively, I keep attacking. I keep throwing the football until they make me change. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. It was Jaron Reed who got him down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And it's third down. But one thing's for sure, when you've got a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you're going to give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. He went with the dime look that time on defense. Just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. So on fourth down, on comes the Buccaneer kicker, Matt Gay. There'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. 10-play drive, but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal. And for the offense, 10-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. The putter pinion now to kick this one away. 
And this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the inline. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10 nothing early as they've got it first and 10. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll start out on the ground with Carson. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. On second down, it's Carson. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. He lost two there, and it's third down. He stayed afloat for a second there after the first wave of contact, but it, he, that was going nowhere. Yeah, what did he tell us in pregame? I just don't want to get my feet stopped initially when I'm trying to make a run. That's exactly what happened there. Unfortunately, as you noted, got away a little bit from the first one, but the wave swarmed him under. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. They decide to air it out a little bit on that play, take a shot downfield, but the coverage was really nice. Able to get a hand in and tip it away. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll kick it away for the second time. The Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and 10. Hey, ready? Y25! 54! All jet! All jet! Every jet! Jameis now on first down. Open man is Howard, the tight end. Now this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And with the Buccaneers' new coaching staff, you have to figure they're going to want to use O.J. Howard a little bit more this season. 34 catches, 565 yards last year, but that was in only 10 games. 6'6", 251, and can run. Find a way to get him the ball as they just did there. The throw over the middle, taken in. And he'll be brought down right around the 37th. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Winston looking for Perriman there. He's got him. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. That throw good for four. It's second down. 10-0 the score after one on EA Sports. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. On second down, Barber. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Peyton Barber, a surprise workhorse for the Buccaneers in 2018. I don't think they expected him to have 234 carries, but he certainly felt like he could carry the load and just carried it there for a nice game. The Bucs on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll run here with Barber. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath, they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. They'll run it now out of the gun. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets them to second and four. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. 
Winston gives to Barber. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. First down, they go with Barber again. And give him six yards here as he's stopped near the 35 at the 34. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Ready, new ready. Right there, 54 Mike. Hey, let's get that home. <laughs> On second down and four, Winston. He finds his tight end, Howard. That's complete. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Let's set a tone, fellas. Let's set a tone. Third and short yardage, Winston. And the pressure gets there, and Winston goes down. That's Ziggy Ansah, the number five pick in 2013, credited with a sack. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, They'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's really a difficult task. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. Barber on first and ten. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The Bucks on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. Here it's third and three. Throwing. Winston. And all the way down inside the five to the four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. When Mike Evans sees man coverage, I don't think he's the only guy who gets excited. I'll guarantee the guy throwing the ball does because guess what? He's got a lot of options about where to place it because of Mike Evans' size and frame. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll be second and goal. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile. He stopped that one behind the line of scrimmage. Second and goal from the six this time. They go back to the ground. This time, Barber. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here, brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Gay's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. 
That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. And a short kick, taking it about the 16. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. They've had it twice. They punted twice, not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is in this situation. They've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and that'll make this a second and 13. This is Carson. Space to maneuver at the 40. And all the way up to the 46. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. Completes it to Dixon. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Here's Carson, and he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. From the 40 now on second down, Wilson. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs' 22-yard line. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now it's Carson. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. That's a gain of 13 as they try to whittle away at this 13-point deficit. A big hole there. How about him handling the point of attack? Just positioning himself so that that run could go right off of his backside and deep into the secondary. And inaugural trip to the red zone here for the Seahawks. They're looking at a first and goal from about the 9. And now he'll tuck it and run. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. He was able to get away earlier in the drive, but apparently all the time they put in practice finally came to the front, didn't it? They remembered their lessons and found a way to contain him when he took off on that one. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Wilson after the play fake to Carson. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete.
So this will be play number eight on the drive. It's third and goal. From the gun, it's Wilson. And Dixon has it. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. comes the Seahawk kicker here on fourth down. It's Jason Myers. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. And Myers able to knock it through. And they will indeed get on the board here, but still trailing. It's now 13 to 3. So they do get three points, but that's now three drives with only the three points, not a ratio that's going to win you many ball games. Not at all, Brandon. And think about it this way. We all know payoff is the key, right? And wouldn't we love to have the concession on every T-shirt that's been printed in football that says finish on it? Because that's the mantra everywhere. Got to be able to finish drives, put points on the board. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Now that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back on maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Jameis to throw it. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the shotgun, it's Winston. And he's gonna find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. To the air again with Winston. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Now, I know it's an emotional game, Charles. You can't do that. And when you get into your film sessions and you argue your case with your coaches, that's exactly what they say at the end. You just can't do it. It costs your team. First down, Winston. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. And I think they are going to get this one back. Boy, that would have been something. Double turnovers. But instead, they'll keep the possession on the INT. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. 
And the Buccaneer defense for the second straight play, flexing its muscle by forcing a loss. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards there, first down. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They run it with Carson. Shedding the tackle. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now it's Wilson. It's caught right side, Dixon. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. A gain of a yard brings up third and seven. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the shotgun, Wilson. Completes it to Dixon. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And he'll take this from 147-yard line to the other. A gain of six. A gain of six there on first. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him... Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Carl Nassib. Coming in hard there on the blitz, and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Enough takes a start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. On third down, Wilson. And that will be incomplete. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to build off the turnover. Well, the defense certainly did its part. It got them the football. But you're exactly right. It looks like they're going to have to punt this one away. And it's not a turnover, but doesn't it feel like one after grabbing the momentum with the defensive play? Yeah, and they had all that momentum after getting the football and now zapped right back in the other direction. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go. And he lost the football. 
Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. They'll run on first down. Barber. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Now, none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards of carry at the moment. Once again, it's Barber. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. They go play action. Winston. That is caught. It's Perriman. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And he went in route there from the slot for the completion. Love how he runs his routes because it's all setting up your defender. Give him a little something one way, take it the other way. Head and shoulder fake. Sometimes you make one step to the outside and break it inside. Really well run route. And pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes this forward for about six. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turning around and tossing it to the runner. But where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football? If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a gain. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. They'll try and run here with Barber. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. No surprise there, Jadevian Clowney with a tackle for loss. We all know how he became one of the most famous players in football, though, don't we remember? Oh, that one play. Yeah, that one big-time play was on highlights everywhere. They want to see more of that here in the NFL. They'll run it now out of the gun. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead them to third down. It's been a pretty long drive. This will be play number nine, and they need 10 yards out of it on third. On play action, Winston. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down, so hang on. A big call coming on third down. So the pass incomplete in the end zone, but contact and pass interference. And now where does the ball get placed? Yeah, at the one-yard line. One-yard line. They gave up excellent real estate on that one. That's going to work really, really well for the guys who throw it. Here's Barber. And he's in. Touchdown, Buccaneers. A five-yard touchdown run as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. 
It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like Bring it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over. You didn't I turn guess. it over, right? You're giving it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away, and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. And wow, now we got to go out there and stop people. So yeah, there's always something positive to be gained from it. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Partner as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now a toss play. It's Carson. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, if these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. On second and 11 now, Wilson. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Wilson now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. From midfield now, here's Wilson. And an alley to run. And he slides to avoid the hit. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 39. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you have something about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards. So make it second and five. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Second and five now. Wilson and Dixon over the middle. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs 24-yard line. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. And that is going to do it for this.
this third quarter of action. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. On second and 15 now, Wilson. And he's going to go down here a sack. They push him back to the 34. Carl Nassib picks up his second sack of the afternoon. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. Wilson. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. This is caught. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Tyler Lockett, 34 yards. And the Seahawks are able to close the gap just a bit. It took them a while to get their speedster involved, but they found him downfield there. And what we've discovered as we've watched games is the speedster doesn't have to have a lot of catches, doesn't have to have volume in order to have a huge impact on the game. His speed scares the heck out of defenses, and other guys can capitalize, but when you finally hit him and he carries it all the way into the end zone, that's what you're paying him for, that big threat that can make big plays on a limited number of catches. That's how you step on the stage with your first catch, take it to the house. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Winston now to throw on first down. He completes this into the hands of Miller. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. The completion good for three, and it's second down. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you got to run fast. Of course, you got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness is a premium for all of that now. Now the throw here complete on the right sideline. Seven yards there and a first down. First down, Buccaneers. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. We got this. Ready. So a little bit of a stiffer Ready. challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Good gain there on first down. It keeps him in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front. Good blocking. Nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage. Stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Now he's flushed out right. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. And down right around the 37. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 37. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. 
moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but it's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. 14 yards there and a Buccaneer first down. He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish because strategy would tell you run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. On second and nine, Winston toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Chris Godwin that time, and it's third down. The Bucks on third down. They've been really good, converting seven of their ten tries. This is third and nine. Here's Winston. That's caught by Howard. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. Please tell me this doesn't come off as snarky. But that's a relative chip shot. I mean, you've got to be able to execute that one. I don't care what they design on the other side about trying to block the kick. That should be three points on the board. Yeah, and we've talked about it before. If you're out at 55, 60 yards, low trajectory from here, you get that thing up, this should be three. Yeah, I, there's nothing routine in football, but this one really almost should be. Snap, hold, kick, ball through the post. Didn't happen that way. On first down, Wilson. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. An ex teammate used to tell me all the time I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. And the Seahawks on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This time it's third and three. To throw is Wilson. And he's got Lockett. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Wilson to Lockett there for the Seahawk first down. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Wilson now off the bootleg. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball. 
and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. Here we go. Here we go. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. He's going to go up top for the end zone. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawks touchdown. DK Metcalf. There to make the grab, as they are now just an extra point away from making this a three-point game. And it was a tight window. He knew he had to rocket that thing in there. He got it done. And when you're able to complete one like that, your confidence has to just go sky high. You just mentioned it. Tight window. Sings it in there, despite excellent coverage. Result, touchdown. Extra point up and through by Myers. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. This game has really flipped on its head. Two unanswered touchdowns by the other side, and now... You know, they take over here with just a very slim one-score lead. And we've seen this how many times now? Teams get a big lead, they go into coast mode, and all of a sudden they're scrambling and battling for a win down the stretch. They've got to put something together right here, otherwise they're in danger of doing the old snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Now a throw over the middle, and he's got it to start the drive. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven, past the 30 to the 32. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Evans once again the intended receiver, and it's third and short. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 14 yards there and a Buccaneer first down. His longest run of the game right there, and a pretty good time for it. A huge third down conversion late. Love the mindset. Love the way he flipped the switch. Late in the game, needed a big run, and helped produce it with great leverage from the offensive line. But you also know what happens, too. The defense stacks the line. So if you can break through that first barrier, there's usually plenty of run. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Play fake, Winston. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. This a very important drive, and that incompletion leads to a very important third down here if they're going to try and get the football back. Yeah, getting it back, absolutely crucial to their chances to try and win this game. I would expect a lot of pressure here. They can't afford to let them continue to get first downs and eat away at the clock. He's got this one complete to Perriman. 
And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 34-yard line. Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. The first down throw for Winston. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Jameis again. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. A gain of eight there on the eighth play of the drive. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. They'll throw again. Winston looking for Perriman there. He's got him. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 13-yard line. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Target was Chris Godwin, and now it's second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Winston here to throw. This is caught, and he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. From 13 yards out, as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. Well, that was absolutely ideal for them, wasn't it? Trying to salt this game away. I think one of my kids just graduated in the amount of time they had the football. That was absolutely impressive. Everybody wants those salt away the game drives. What makes them successful? Well, when you're able to mix run pass, when you're able to control the football and stay ahead of the chains, I'm using every cliche I know, <laughs> but that's how you get it done because you're not taking negative plays, and that way you're able to run what you want to run when you get a chance to call it. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This will be taken short. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. So Wilson and the Seahawks down by 10. A minute 51 on the clock. They'll need a score here and also likely an onside kick recovery. But first things first, first and 10. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now Wilson. This complete to Rocket. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And they take possession two yards away from midfield at the 48-yard line. 
Well, that drive wasn't a case of wanting to put points on the board. It was needing they to, had to had having to, and they didn't get it done. Yeah, didn't get it done, and now you look at the situation and the point differential, two scores, pretty much game, set, match. How about the takeaway, though, huh? How about those defensive guys? Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. Getting down to the end here, they have a two-score lead. Barely, but it's a two-score lead, so that probably makes you as a coach feel a lot more comfortable right now, doesn't it, Charles? It does, but it doesn't mean now you go out and run option or some kind of wild double reverse or anything like that. But you do know that if anything does go haywire, you're still in control of this game. I want a double reverse, don't you? <laughs> I'm just waiting for that day where we actually see something like that in this situation. We'll see what happens here. They're not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Winston. On the crossing route, complete. It's Hudson. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. The carry for Barber. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. A gain of 13, it's a first down. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Running is Barber. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. Doesn't matter whether you've watched high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. Winston will kneel down, and that should be your ball game. So time has run out on what will be a Tampa Bay victory. And say what you want about CenturyLink Field up in Seattle, but for my money, this is the loudest and most difficult place to win in the league. It's very hard. The fan support off the charts. The way that they make noise and understand when to make noise, they understand the game as well as anyone. And how about what we get in our, our media packets when we start preparing for the game? They have it in their own stuff, right? The number of offsides, penalties, false start penalties that they draw against the opposing team because of that fan support. And last but not least, they designed the stadium to keep the noise in, and it works. But not in this one. They were able to somehow come in here and get that victory. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. From Seattle, so long, everybody.